Hello Geeks and Gamers, Matt Lemke here with Through Gamer Goggles and today we've got another flip through for you. This is the long-awaited Rise of Tiamat, which if uh, you're not familiar with D&D Next, this might not mean a, a darn thing to you. But this is the sequel to The Horde of the Dragon Queen and it starts you off at around, oh, I don't know, 8th level-ish. I suppose, you know, depending on your crew and your group that you can play with a little bit lower of a level. Uh, the book, you know, it, it is an adventure, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm going to, you know, give you some basic background. The first 20 pages or so are really a lot of background information and information on the story. Some of the characters and villains, uh, the different political groups that set the, I guess they prepare the DM more than the players uh, because the DM is going to share as much information as he wants to with you before you get to episode one. Uh, there are several episodes in this book, many of which can be standalone adventures for other campaigns if you wish, with a little bit of creativity. Uh, but episode one is a rather interesting episode, and I think they did a pretty good job with it. It's uh, done basically in four phases, and what happens is the party returns to Waterdeep after discovering everything they discovered in the Hordes of the Dragon Queen, which I'm not going to tell you how that ends in case you haven't played through yet. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. But what they do here is... They start this book, The Rise of Tiamat, off with a massive role-playing session. Now, when I say role-playing, I mean your characters, the party, they're fundamental in this, the councils of Waterdeep. And over the course of the adventure, there's four of them. Um, what's unique is there's rules for scoring the session, which if you drop, drop, flip back to the back of the book, they made a little scoring chart. I'm not going to zoom in on it because I don't want to give, it'll give some spoilers away. For you and your players, so what? This this episode is just really kind of cool. I like the idea that they integrate, integrate, integrate. Oh my gosh, that they um, integrate. Thank you. <laughs> integrate the opportunity for the players not only to play their roles but to play characters and uh, define where they stand within the storyline. And by making certain decisions and doing certain things, it's their job basically to rally the different political factions around the Sword Coast and in Waterdeep to stand against the dragon cult that is seeking to uh, summon Tiamat back to the uh, world. Uh, and what is good about this session or this pod, this episode is that it can be a lot of fun role-playing this, for both the characters and for the DM if you've got a lively group that actually acts out their characters' personalities. Um, it could be extremely boring for those people that don't want to give their characters' personality and they just want to play roles. Uh, the rest of the book is pretty much every, every uh, episode is an adventure that could be, like I said, they, they could all be standalone. There's a good map for you to take a look at to get an idea in the second episode. Um, there's a good bit. I mean, some of them have more combat than others. Uh, there, is a, there is a lot of action and adventure in here. There's a, there's a decent amount of thinking um, where you can easily bypass things and make uh, other things work for you. There's a lot of story in these episodes that a DM, a creative DM, can easily grab as hooks and plot lines to other stories after you finish this adventure. Uh, and, you know, it goes through basically in every episode there's a major villain. Uh, it it kind of follows the idea of you've got minions and bosses, and then there's the episode where the cult decides to strike you back, and, and there's a, a decent amount of action there. Uh, there's another big role-playing session towards the end where the players actually meet with the good dragons and attempt to uh, get them to help based off of what they do. And then there's the uh, episode of the tower, uh, and uh, it has some very interesting map work to it. Uh, Cobalt Press did a great job with this, as did all the writers and the authors. Again, I'm not going to tell you too much about the story in and of itself. I have read most of this book. Uh, it, it it pretty much follows A to B to C to D. 
um, with some room for any, any DM really to create backstories and new stories out of this uh, adventure book, out of this series. I mean, it really is an adventure path, but, you know, there's so much, there's enough stuff in it that you can take it offshoot, and by the time you get to the last battle, you could be well beyond what they recommend of the 12th level for this. There's a lot of, um, I like it for that reason, the fact that there's a lot of room for DMs to be creative. Um, the final battle is Tiamat's Return. Uh, what I will tell you about this chapter, because I'm sure this is what everybody kind of wants to know about it, is uh, whether or not the players succeed in doing certain things through the story, uh, the whole thing builds up to a climatic battle where the player characters and factions of the Sword Coast are going up against the Dragon Cult. So if you play it through that far, there's possibilities of things happening. Um, there, there's a good map for you to look at, Tiamat's Temple. Uh, what I didn't look at was whether or not you actually fight Tiamat. I really don't know. I, I, wanted to, I don't want to know that because I actually want to play this, this adventure. I, I don't know. I just don't know. And therefore, I don't want to know the things that are happening. So, that is the Rise of Tiamat for you, uh, without spoilers. I, I really have a hard time doing adventure paths or books that are adventures modules uh, because I don't want to ruin it for the players and the characters. I, I want them to have that suspense. So, I hope that I gave you just enough to make you realize that this book has a lot of potential uh, as a DM and as a player. There's easily 20 hours of play in this book if you use it right. Easily. There's one, two, there's seven, eight, there's ten episodes. So if you go with four hour sessions um, and you're really cruising, you've got 40 hours of play, which I think you can actually get a lot more than that into this book. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your suggestions on this. Tell me if I didn't give you enough spoilers. You know, I, I, I'm one that would rather find out by playing. So I kind of think, that like most people do, most people are alike. So thanks for watching. Every uh, Thursday is World Playing Game Day. Stop back next week, check out, see what we've got uh, that we're reviewing, and have a good week.